Hey everybody. Just kind of getting set up, making sure that the Facebook Live works, getting things cleared up a bit. We're just about there, just a couple seconds away. How's everybody doing? It is snowing in Chicago and it doesn't look like it's gonna stop. Hey Fran, good to see you. How's it going out there in Colorado? Is it super snowy as well? All right. Hey Wendy, thanks for joining in everybody. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, hey Gail. So here's the thing, I mean I've been trying to go super high tech with these feeds and I'm almost feeling like, oh my gosh, hi Wendy, do not tell me what the temperatures are like for you out in Hawaii. Do not tell us. We don't want to hear it. My ears are closed. Um, Wendy and I went to grad school together out in Hawaii, so I'm just so happy that you're here with us and watching. I tried to go super high tech with these feeds and with these classes. It wasn't quite working, so I just thought, let me just go basic tech because that's what I know and uh, let's have fun with it. So it's not gonna be perfect, but I truly want to make sure that um, I can offer you all some light in this sort of darkness that we've had all around us, and I can offer you a chance to kind of play in your kitchen and watch me cook. I haven't been able to you know, interact with anybody or do any kind of classes, teach any classes, so this is just a good way for me to kind of get out to all of you and vice versa. One thing I always start my classes off by saying is this. In my classes, we all come, and often we come down, come in and we sit down like strangers. You know, you're kind of like not talking to the person next to you. You kind of feel a little bit nervous to say anything. It's okay. By the end of my classes, we're usually hugging. We're exchanging information. We are um, plan making plans to meet up with people that we've just met. And if you've been to one of my classes, you know that's what happens because I feel like that's what really happens over food. Now, you're gonna say, we're not in the same location. How can we all do that? Well, on here, um, Fran knows this from being on a lot of my Facebook Live um, classes and tips and tricks, you get to know one another online. and you'll go ahead and answer a question for somebody because I may not hear it or um, rather see it because I can't hear you. I won't see it right away and won't be able to respond. So I'm gonna rely on all of you to do that for me and you'll get to know each other. We'll have a community right here. And whenever you have a community around food and we are all about supporting each other, you tend to find that no matter how you think, we're just there for each other and that's what this community is all about. Hey Judith, oh my gosh, Judith Hines is um, how I got into Les Dames d'Escalfier. She is a mentor and she's a friend and she's amazing and she's right here in Chicago and we need to resurrect those cooking classes with the city of Chicago. That was a big mistake that they did not, um, did not keep those going and I taught my first cooking class with Judith and I think in one of them, Judith, um, not to keep this belabor this point because I want to get into the cooking, uh, I think someone almost set me on fire at one point in one of the classes. So we have fun, 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 and that is what this is all about. So say hi to everybody, interact, please do, because that's what this is all about. Also, it's about talking to you about two brands that I've grown to really love. Now, Kikomon is soyu, soy sauce, and I, I just happen to have this little bottle We've always used Kikoman. Now, the reason why I love Kikoman is it's a naturally brewed soy sauce. Why is that critical? Because they're not adding chemicals to the brewing process, and it's very natural. It happens over a long time of brewing, and it's a quality product, and that's what I'm all about. So, please check them out. Another really cool brand that I've been working with is Mama Noodle. They're from Thailand. And if you know me, um, I used to, I spent a summer living in Japan and my host mother was at the end of the day, at the end of the week once, she said, Anupi, what's wrong with you? All you wanna do is eat noodles. I am noodle obsessed. And when I lived in Hawaii, it was great. There were noodles everywhere, right? I'm noodle obsessed. And this vermicelli brown um, whole grain noodle is really cool because it really retains its shape. So if you can find it, it's sold nationwide many times at Asian ethnic grocers, just ask for it. It is the number one noodle company in Thailand. 
It's a very high quality noodle that doesn't clump together when you cook it. And in fact, you don't need to cook it very much at all. When you find it, you'll see the uh, instructions on the back. Use whatever you've got for now, not a problem. But you'll just soak it in regular water for about five minutes, drain that, and then just spray it with some hot water and it's ready to go. And I'll show you the noodles in just a little bit. So that's that. Now I want to show you my few quick tips and tricks that I like to really use to kind of get ahead in the kitchen. It's all about the prep. And Judith, I know you know this and you're gonna be proud of me that I absolutely talk about the prep all the time in all my classes still because you really kind of hone that in for me. These trays, the baking trays, pull them out and use them for just great organization in the kitchen, okay? So this is what we do when we have to organize. When I have to cook a lot of recipes for my cookbooks and I've got a test, I pull all these trays out, I make them work for me because I've got the recipes set up by tray in my kitchen. Also, when I go to prep my produce and I wanna wash it all out, when I bring it in from the grocery store, I just pull out two of these trays, the big ones, and I lay them all out fruit in one, vegetables in the other, and then I just wash, 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 and I get rid. You can't have it sitting in the plastic bags, it will get spoiled. So just a quick tip for you on that. Use your trays, which is what I've done today with all of my ingredients. Um, another thing is you wanna keep your trash bowl handy. Get a beautiful bowl that you just love. This reminds me of my trip to Portugal. This is where I got this bowl. I will tell you the story one day of how I brought it home. It was pretty Brazilian, if I might add. Um, but we managed to get it home without it breaking and I just love this bowl. I love having it around me So have beautiful things around you that you love. This is your trash bowl You're not going to the trash can constantly to throw things out You just throw everything in there and maybe grab some stuff to make a soup at the end of the week Maybe you'll throw that away. Maybe you'll compost it whatever you're gonna do. All right, so let's go to the recipe This is what's left of my recipe prep today because everyone's been eating not my prep my actual recipe i made it before i'm going to make it again with all of you because it was so good and so that's all i've got left which is a great sign right so all the kids in the house and i call i include my husband in that so the three kids in the house um they ate it all up so that's what we've got left and it is an indo chinese chili garlic noodle dish now what is indo chinese we know Indian food, we know Chinese food. What's Indo-Chinese food? Well, it's a type of cuisine that was developed in Calcutta, now Kolkata, the east part of India. It was the Chinese communities that came in there and they opened up restaurants in that area and they modified the dishes to appeal to the local clientele, which were Indian, which makes sense. That's what every restaurant tour does when they move outside of their home country and they go into other countries, right? That's what Indian restaurants do in America. That's what Indian restaurants do when I've eaten in France or wherever it might be. They modify the food so that the local population loves it. And that's what happened with Chinese food in India. Now, what exactly does Indo-Chinese mean? It means that you're cooking your ingredients with a little bit more of the Indian side style of ingredients and Chinese techniques. So you might have Indian ingredients, you might have some Indian spices in there, but you're gonna have the Chinese techniques combined together to create this other type of um, fusion of food that is just absolutely so delicious that when I land in Delhi, I'll eat my aunt's food the first night and then the second day, we've got to go to Connaught Place and go and get some Indo-Chinese. It is so delicious. It's a combination of two of my absolute favorite, favorite types of food. So now, let me show you what the prep looks like. Remember, the recipe for this chili uh, garlic noodle is on my website. So you can go to IndianIsApplePie.com. You've got the recipe there. You've got the ingredients. I will give you the technique and the instructions. I'll add them after this um, live demo. But uh, my computer was down most of the weekend, so I didn't have a chance to exactly do that, but you'll have it all. I want you to go to take the pressure off, and if you're cooking with me, yay. Gail, I hope that you are, and you've got all your ingredients prepped. If you're watching, that's wonderful. Just watch, just take it in, because that's what 
classes really are all about. I'm not teaching you just to make this recipe. I'm teaching you techniques so that when you get into your kitchen, you can take the noodle and go, you know what, I need to use a vermicelli rice noodle, but I want to use this other noodle. I'm going to use a soba over here. I want to not use noodles because I tend to be a little bit more carb light. So I'm going to use, I don't know, instead of noodles, I'll put in some protein, some chicken. Maybe I'll put in some shredded cabbage, um, some cauliflower, whatever it might be. Make it so that it works for you, but use whatever I give you here as your technique to get there. So let's go ahead and flip the camera. I'm going to grab it. Remember, this is a very low budget show, and we're just going to have fun with it. We'll take it off there, and I'm going to show you exactly what I've got on my prep station. We've got tons of garlic, right? I um, <clears throat> love having um, tons of garlic in here. In fact, triple the amount of normal recipes for this dish. I just love the, um, the garlic. And I think it's Star Noodle in Maui, which is where we go quite a bit. I, I believe it's Star Noodle. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, folks. Wendy, you might, you might know. Um, they have just the best garlic noodles. So I just love overdoing the garlic. We've got a green bell pepper. I'd almost say this is a little bit more of the Indian influence. We love this capsicum, this green bell pepper in a lot of our dishes. We've also added red bell pepper, some carrot, some red onion sliced down. And here we go with the chili pepper. We love our serranos. And look at mine, we're wilting a little bit in the fridge. No bother, we pulled them out, we're gonna use them. And we've just sliced them down. Now you might notice with my chilies, I don't bother taking out the seed or the membrane, different people feel differently about that and different cuisines feel differently about it. We keep everything in there, we love all that heat. The more you chop a chili pepper, the more heat you release. So you wanna keep that in mind, if you don't want all that heat, you're not hurting my feelings, no worries, pull it back or just slice it in half once lengthwise. You'll have less heat in your dish or just leave it whole and then take it out before you eat. And yes, Fran, I love the fact that you are less of a recipe follower because that's the key. I cannot tell you how to eat in your house. I can give you suggestions on how to put things together, some green onion scallions. And here's another tip that my husband is, he's been calling me the jar lady lately. This is just a spaghetti sauce jar. Just soaked it in hot water, got rid of the label. These are awesome for leftovers. They're tall, they can fit in your fridge, they're clear, you can see everything that you need. All right, here we go. Here are our sauces. We've got a quarter cup, might sound like a lot, it's really not, of soy sauce or soyu. We've got a hot sauce. This is actually also a Kikoman sauce. It's a combination of hot sauce and a little bit more of the, I believe it's soy sauce. Let me grab the bottle. No, I'm sorry, this is the, let me show you, just in case you wanna go look for it. This is the Kiko Sriracha hot chili sauce, and I just wanted to try it out and use it up. You can see we love it. Um, a tablespoon of any hot sauce, any kind of East Asian hot sauce. A little brown sugar, I use light brown sugar. Some black pepper, about a half a teaspoon, and I have about a half a teaspoon of salt under there. It's hiding under the black pepper. Here we've got some rice vinegar. Um, now, if you don't have the rice vinegar, what do you do? Throw up your hands and go, no, nah, I'm not gonna cook. No, no, you're not. Either you leave it out or you use another vinegar that you've got. A apple cider vinegar will do beautifully as a substitute. And also keep in mind, apple cider vinegar is incredibly healthy for you and it helps you feel fuller. It, it um, helps with weight loss as well, they say. Do your own research, so that's an option. And a little bit of roasted sesame oil that we like to add towards the end, right? So not a lot of ingredients. If you say to me, Anupi, I don't like the bell pepper, no worries, sub it. Not, worry, not worried at all if you don't want the carrots. Maybe you've got some butternut squash in the fridge that you wanna use up. That will pair beautifully in this dish as well. Use whatever you've got. All right, so let's get to cooking because I know all of you probably if you're in Chicago, wanna go out and play in the snow, let's pull you over here and let's do this. Like I said, this is a very 
basic setup. I don't have a three person team with me anymore to do all my visuals. So we're just gonna walk over, ba -ba -da, over to the stove top. And then we're gonna start cooking. <clears throat> all right, so I'm gonna bring my trays over here and we've got a large pan. Now, here's the thing, you can use a wok if you'd like. I kind of like using my stainless steel all clad, these larger pans, which if you are cooking traditional Indian are fantastic because they're heavier, they retain quite a bit of heat, things are not gonna burn. But here's the thing on Indo-Chinese as well. I find that not as much with straight Chinese, but more with Indo-Chinese, we want to take the cooking process just a tiny bit further. It's not much further, just a bit. So you can actually cook in a heavier pan or pot. So we're gonna go ahead and put that right here. I'm gonna bring my trays over and I'm gonna move the camera so you're right over the pan. I won't be able to see your questions at that point. And hi, Jenny. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for everybody else that's tuned in. And the hubby says, I talk awful fast. So just tell me to slow down whenever you need me to. Not a problem, I will try. <laughs> All right, how's everybody feeling though today? I know that if we're in Chicago, you are probably snowed in, aren't you? Hey, Rebecca, thanks for tuning in from the East Coast, I appreciate it. All right, now we've got everything here and the beauty of using your trays, remember early on I said use your baking trays? You can now become incredibly mobile with all of your ingredients. Hi Jennifer, thanks for joining in. You can move your stuff around. Say for example, you've got a tray of berries that you rinsed and now you wanna just you know save them, you don't wanna eat, you put them away right away, stick that tray right in your fridge. You don't have to fiddle with as much stuff and that's why I love my baking trays. I use them all the time. I had to go and buy a whole set because of, of my own because my daughter, my 15 year old is the baker. I'm not so much the baker in the house and she was getting really upset that I was using her baking trays. She was getting very possessive about the baking trays. I just bought a whole other set for myself. I love these and if anybody wants um, a recommendation on what to get, get two or three sets and I find that you'll use them quite a bit. All right, so let's get our pan nice and hot. I am super old school. I touch my pans, I touch everything. My hands are very clean, I promise. I've got my oil. As we're heating up, I'll talk to you about oils. Remember for Indian high uh, heat cooking, you want uh, an oil that's gonna withstand it. That is why we typically will use a ghee with Indian cooking because high heat is key, it does not break down and get rancid on you. So another couple of high heat oils include grapeseed oil. You could use a um, coconut oil. You could use, as I'm doing today, an avocado oil. Hi, Gail. Um, Gail's gonna be cooking with me. Anybody else cooking with us or with me? Um, please let me know. And if you have any questions, you let me know. If someone else figures the question, the answer out, please jump in and answer that question. Um, here's the thing though, when you're cooking Indian, and not so much today, but the coconut oils, the peanut oils and all of them are very specific to the region that, oh, that's right, Linda, awesome, the region that you're cooking from. So if you're using a coconut for, hey Maria, that's awesome. Um, and make sure you guys take pictures too, folks. Everyone take photos of what you've cooked. When you're ready and you're done, I want them posted on Facebook. Um, oh, and I meant to mention too, anybody that tags someone else or posts a picture, I'm gonna enter you to win a copy of my first book, The Indian Slow Cooker. We have a drawing tomorrow morning, so make sure you let me know that you did that. All right, so on oils, you wanna be careful of the taste profile. So if you're using a coconut oil for Punjabi cooking, you can, but I'm just gonna let you know that someone Punjabi is probably gonna be like, eh, not sure if I like it because of that underlying taste profile of coconut. And, and smell as well. And so you wanna be a little bit cautious of what oils you're using. Today I've got an avocado oil, high smoke, smoke point oil, 
And the flavoring, I'm not worried about it because we're gonna, we're gonna really get all sorts of flavor profiles in here, so I'm a little bit less concerned about that. All right, so I'm gonna turn the camera. Here's the big thing real quick that I wanna tell you and warn you of. If for some reason the camera blacks out because it gets a little hot, I will come back, I promise. So just it's happened to me twice, I'm gonna be a little bit more careful about it, but I'm gonna get you just about right into the pot so that you can see exactly what we're gonna do because here's the thing, it's super critical and I think we're far enough away where you cannot, you won't get overheat, we won't get overheated, but you'll see everything. And let's see if that light, is that better? Can someone tell me, is that light better or would you like a little more light? Um, keep in mind too, because of the high heat, we absolutely want to have everything prepped and ready to go. Let's do that. And there you go. All right, all good? All right, so if you want any more changes, okay, fantastic, thank you, Fran. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put two tablespoons of oil. Let's go, let's do it, folks. This is nice and hot. If you find it's getting a little too hot, beautiful thing you can do is move your pan or pot, or if you are on a gas stove as I am, just turn down your heat from a medium high to a little bit lower, okay? So what we're gonna do is typically for Indian, and this will always, you know, throw me off a tiny bit, I typically will go for my spices because I wanna do the tharka, but we're gonna actually go ahead and put our garlic in. Keep in mind, grinding this much garlic, thanks Jenny, is so easy in a food processor. I have a mini Cuisinart that I just love just for that purpose. We're gonna infuse our oil with this beautiful garlic. This was about 12 cloves. And I honestly would be happy to use a little more. Not a worry that it's sticking a little bit. We will deglaze this pan with a little bit of that soy sauce later. We're gonna just go ahead and let it just cook and stir it. And let's go to the next ingredient. The onions are gonna go right in. On this, I can already sense the sizzle's a little low. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put the heat up and get it going. I love onions. We usually buy like a 50 pound bag of onions at Restaurant Depot at <laughs> one time. I know, hilarious, right? Those are the little weird things when um, COVID happened back in March, we started dealing with, you know, all of this like nesting at home and all of that. My husband and I went and we bought two huge bags, one of yellow onion and one of red, and it was 50 pounds each, and we got through the entire um, last six to seven months with just those bags of onions. It's crazy how many onions we go through. All right, so we've got our bell pepper going in. Let's go ahead and put our green bell pepper in as well. And then our carrots. See how simple and easy this actually is? Especially when you're prepped. The prep is 90% of everything you're gonna do. It's kind of like I was joking on my on my blog that it's like eating or extra or losing weight. It's 80% eating, 20% working out. It's like surfing. I'm a former surf girl, like I used to live in Hawaii. So paddling, if you don't love paddling in the work, that work is about, I'd say with surfing <laughs> and me, it's about 95% of the work because I rarely catch that wave. And when I do, it's that 5%. You've gotta just enjoy the prep. And that's why I say when I am prepping, I am just putting on some music Maybe I've got some TV, some news in the background, just something that will just occupy my brain. A podcast, I've been very big on podcasts lately. And I've got something that's just gonna like keep me occupied as I am, and the chilies are going in, as I am prepping, prepping away. I used to go to school with someone in Hawaii that when we lived together in our dorms, he would have his headphones on. He had a Walkman at the time. It was so, so cute. He was a big cook. 
and um, he'd have his Walkman going, and he'd have the music and the tunes going. And he'd prep, 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 and he'd be cooking along. It's just fun to watch him. I love that. All right, so that is pretty much the amount of heat and cooking that we want for this. That's about it. We're gonna go ahead and push everything aside. And what I wanna do is just make sure the noodles are set before I do anything else. See, the garlic has um, stuck to the pan on the bottom, the little bits. Of course it was going to, right? But that's okay. We're gonna manage that in just a moment. Let's move the pan away. And this is just for me to show you what I'm gonna do with the noodles. I have my noodles here. This is why I love these mama noodles. All I did was I soaked them in room temp water for about five minutes and rinse them with hot water. And then I've got this nifty little pot. Just basically, this is what they look like. What I wanna do because they're very long, I wanna go in there and I just wanna cut them with kitchen shears. All right, so we're just gonna cut, cut, cut. Just because it makes it a little more manageable. And what I love about these noodles is look how they retain their shape. A lot of noodles are actually going to, at this point, get incredibly soggy. But look at this. And that is so critical. We have yet in this house to make a really good pad thai because the, the noodles clump up. It is really key to have a beautifully Qual beautiful quality, high quality noodle. And if you don't want to cut your noodles, I know that I probably shouldn't. It's not, it's good luck to have long noodles, folks. I know, but don't do it then, okay? But I'm just saying, I did it. I did. Jenny, don't get upset with me. Please don't get upset with me. All right, let's go ahead and now deglaze our pan with our beautiful sauces. What's gonna go in first? It's gonna be our soy sauce, our soyu. Let's go ahead and get that in. Now because this has been sitting a bit, I'm gonna put a tiny bit of water in there, not much, just a bit. And this is where you're gonna use your judgment as you cook. I just felt like it needed it because it sat for a little bit. But the last batch I cooked didn't need that, and that was fine. And now we're gonna go ahead and put our hot sauce in. Now typically in, in Chinese, and many Chinese dishes at this point, it also put a little bit of thickener, like a cornstarch, but not so much for these noodles. So we've got our brown sugar going in, our black pepper, our salt. My brown sugar got a little hard just sitting there. That's okay. I used to like brown sugar. I kind of like that. We're just going to mix it in the middle. We made a little well in the middle of this. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and deglaze that pan. Take all of the beautiful, beautiful bits and pieces of the garlic. We're going to pull that all off. And then the vinegar is going to go away. You want a little bit of that tartness to really balance out all of this. Oh my gosh, I can just smell it coming off. Let's go ahead and this is a little awkward, but we'll fix it. There we go. All right, folks, how's everybody doing good? You know, I cannot read your comments, but I will in a bit, I promise. If you want to tag a friend that would love a cooking class, I'm gonna hopefully do this on most Sundays, just tag them and I'll enter you to win a really fun giveaway of my first cookbook, The Indian Slow Cooker. And now we're gonna put the noodles in. So just keep tagging folks that you know. would love to learn how to cook. A lot of these cooking classes I find online are just very long and drawn out. I wanna get you guys, all of you, so comfortable in the kitchen just to throw things together. There's no reason that you need a long run out class, honestly. You can do this fast. Look how easy this is. Now, if you didn't want the noodles in there, what would you do? Some chicken. So I'll take some chicken. You could um, put 
put in some grated cauliflower if you want to get it super duper low carb. You know, it's up to you. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. You could do a, I love soba noodles. Oh, they're so good. Take your tongs, and because we really want this all mixing in with the noodles, Now, I will say I have tried a couple other things in here. White pepper, which is very common in Chinese cooking. It didn't work as well with this dish. This is a very specific Indo-Chinese dish that we find on every menu. When you go to India and you go to these, these restaurants, and there's a few Indo-Chinese restaurants in Chicago. I've heard one in particular is pretty good. But generally speaking, the best ones out of India are really in Toronto. Must be really good. I've been to one, and now there's going to be even more. My cousin telling me up there. All right. Now that's really all you need to do. The last little bit is going to be our sesame oil. So let's just go ahead and hit it with that. And then I always love green onion, just at the end. And that's really all there is to it. Look how beautiful that looks. You've got the recipe. I'll have the instructions up today, I promise. On my website, Indian is Apple Pie. You're going to just go ahead. If you can't find it, you will be able to when you go in there under the blog. You can just look for... Facebook Live. This is such a great fun meal, especially for the kids. My kids absolutely adore these noodles. Go ahead and put them over here. Let's turn that heat off. And all right, so I need to now taste this. as well, but let's just see how it is. Oh my god. This looks so yummy. And honestly, I always like to be full disclosure and honest. I had like three plates of the other. I mean, my kids weren't the only ones that were eating it. I was still. I love noodles. Mm -hmm. Angela? Angela's in Toronto. No, Angela, you're in Montreal. Oh my god. So yummy so good it has got <clears throat> quite the kick to it though because i love heat and we love chilies and my kids do too so if you want to pull that back just a little bit please pull it back that's for angela montreal i will make out there one i promise that's the goal there's one place i really want to go mm -hmm. Did you 
you can put a little bit of oil in that maybe, perhaps, to, um, to maybe unclump them a little bit and make sure they're not too clumpy. Um, maybe rinse them in cold water. Those are a, a few of the tips on pie noodles. But I will say that the quality of the noodle is so critical. And that is why I've become a huge fan of these mama noodles. I typically don't sign on to talk about any brand or any product that I don't use and love myself. I just don't believe in that. Um, but I gotta say, I'm blown away by these noodles. The first time I made them at home to test, my kids went crazy. And typically the ones that I purchase, and again, another thing that I don't do, I don't speak negatively about other brands, but I'll tell you the experience that I had with other brands. One in particular, I made them at home. My kids won't even touch them because they did what you were saying, Linda, they were clumping up. Um, even though I did put a little oil on them, it didn't quite work. Um, and Maria, so on Mama Noodles, I will send you a list of where they are. Just remind me um, when you email me where um, you sh where you live. Um, I think it was near Kildare, correct? And if so, oh, and I just said that out loud. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Um, I should be a little bit more careful than that. Uh, but yeah, we're going to Maria's house for dinner tonight in Kildare. <laughs> I will get a grocery store near you. And I will tell. Um, I will. I will send that over to you and tell you where exactly you can buy them because um, I think it'll make a huge difference. Again, with these noodles, they all fall apart. Even on my dish post cooking them with this dish, I did not even cook them. I just soak them in water. Think about this. I just soak them in water, no boil, drained, and um, that was it. And that's another thing too, Linda, on the pad thai noodles. I find that they can work a little better if you really truly just soak. <laughs> you just soak them and you don't boil. I'm laughing because it's really out. You crack me up. I, I'm coming. If your driveway is plowed, um, that's awesome. I'm there. Uh, all right, folks. So, beautiful things to think about. Get the key to my on. Post a photo of this dish that you've cooked and that you love. And I hope you like it, Gail. We want to hear from you. How is it? Linda, Maria, how is the dish? Have you tried it? Um, post a photo. Hashtag Indian and Apple Pie. A um, couple other things. Next Sunday, I think I'm going to do a honey crusted tofu. So that's what I'm going to uh, hopefully make this week successfully. And then we will demo that next week. My YouTube channel is going to have this video, and it's going to be a lot of chit chatting. I know. Um, but no worries, you can always forward it, um, fast forward it. You can always just watch and repeat the um, segments that you want to see again and again. And it'll live on YouTube. YouTube channel is Indian as Apple Pie. Everything's now pretty much under Indian as Apple Pie. And then we've got the giveaway. But here's the um, thing that I really want you to think about. We don't have a website, Indian as Apple Pie. There is a tab there that says Seva Restaurants. Seva in Sanskrit and Hindi means service. And so my older daughter has created a service project, um, which is all about giving back and helping the Indian restaurant tours out there. So if you know an Indian restaurant that would like to be interviewed by me on Instagram, have them reach out and fill in. There is a little survey share on there. I encourage them to reach out because it's free publicity for them. We want to make sure that all the restaurants we love stay in business. So it's a way for us to get to know what they do. It doesn't matter where they are in the country. There's going to be somebody that's watching these feeds and is going to want to connect with them and go in and get a ticket out, maybe go in and eat food, whatever it might be. Let's keep them going during these COVID times. It's the very least that we can do. Obviously, we're going to love looking at home, but hey, who doesn't need a break and wants to support their local Indian restaurant? So please have them reach out, and I would be absolutely happy to interview them. And Susan, you said you bought vegan fish sauce from Vietnam at one point at the larger Asian groceries, Worcester, Massachusetts. Okay, that's awesome. I love that. 
Um, lots of sauces are becoming vegan using a lot of mushroom and other umami. Um, Hartford, Connecticut. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Um, and that's good to know because my husband has been working in Hartford lately. How interesting is that? So that's where he's been traveling quite a bit. Um, Connecticut, Hartford, Connecticut, right? All right, good to know. And Gail, I'm so glad that you like the dish. Um, thank you for watching, everybody. If it was up to me, I would stay and just keep chatting. Um, because I'd like to talk to all of you. It's so nice to connect, to connect with all of you. And please use this feed to post more and more local groceries that are near you, grocery stores, especially the Asian grocery stores, the specialty stores, the little mom and pop stand. I want you to out in Montreal. I want you to post where to go because I have friends that used to live up there that would love to send their friends locally to those grocers. So what I think we can do too on my Indiana's Apple Pie page, um, oh, that's awesome, Maria. We can list different pockets of the country and the grocers where we can find all of these ingredients more easily. But here's the thing too, if we get away from ordering just online and if you're comfortable to be stored, you may just be helping them to survive during this pandemic. And I don't mind giving up a couple of pennies, a couple of quarters, a couple of dollars to make sure my local grocery stays in business. And part of that for me is also just like very personal to me. I grew up back in the 70s and 80s outside of Philadelphia where there were no grocery stores, no Indian grocery stores. Um, and so I think we take it for granted that all these ethnic grocers are going to stick around. You just don't know. And they're fighting with these narrow margins to stay in business and do everything they do for us. So it's just a really nice way to give back to all of them. So if you could go and um, support them, but also send me their name, where they are, what city and state, I'll do my own research and put the addresses up and send folks their way. I'd be happy to do it. It's the very least that I can do. And the other thing that we can all do is, um, well, Maria's busy eating, so we don't want to interrupt her flow over there. Um, but we can also just continue to just be a great example of what it means to come together over a bowl of food. I just was interviewed for a uh, non-obvious diversity conference, and uh, we talked about food and what that means, uh, how you can make your plate more diverse. And my my whole mantra really truly is folks, it's not just about sharing who I am with you, it's about all of you sharing who you are with, with me and with the folks in my community. So say that you are um, somebody who knows how to make the most perfect pierogies, I want to talk to you. Um, whatever it might be, food is so fascinating and it brings us together if it works in the right way. So I love this. So we are going to do um, absolutely, we're going to do crunchy, delicious, honey crusted tofu next Sunday. And I'm going to make you a believer. I am going to show you how you can take flavors that are in your kitchen and make vegetarian, vegan, super accessible and delicious. And you have to call it that. Just make it good. That's at the end of the day. That's what we're all looking for. So don't cook to the label. Just cook. Use what's around you. Throw in some, I have some pea shoots. I'm going to throw them in, in there right now. But as long as you start by understanding the recipe and the background of where it's from, once you know how to work inside the box, you can take that recipe and start working outside the box so it works for you and your palate. All right, folks. Well, thanks for joining me on this beautifully snowy, crazy Chicago day. Uh, I enjoyed having all of you here, thank you so much for spreading this sea love. I really appreciate all of you. And uh, send me any kind of questions you might have, anupi at indianasapplepie.com. And then we'll talk to you soon. We'll have lots of tips and tricks during the week. And we'll have our next cooking class next week, Sunday. All of you.
you to be there. Bye, everyone. Lots of love. See you soon.